So I've been working on these pedals, and um, if you flip it upside down, here, there's the shaft that goes through it, and, oh man. So, uh, this shaft has got a little bit of slop in it, side to side, even with the, the plastic bearings, or the plastic sleeves. Um, so I'm getting some uh, small shims, they're 16 millimeter ID, 24 millimeter OD by 0.2 millimeter thick shims. I can put them in between the pedals and just sort of any side to side slop out of the way. And then I've got this return spring and what I'm doing is I'm drilling this, the, the top end of the return spring. Um, I'm going to hold it in place with uh, put it a series of three holes along here that I can put uh, say a six millimeter bolt through that'll just hold it in a di different positions providing different amounts of um, return spring pressure. The other thing is I've got new uh, pads nicely uh, nice for these um, for, the, for, for the pedals which is uh, kind of sweet to have um, new rubber pedals so anyway I'm finishing up the conditioning of this in the next couple of days I'm just waiting for the shims and then I can bolt all this into the car. So the, what I've done here is I've taken the old uh, 83 GTI clevis from the old servo and I've cut it off, threaded it, have a coupling nut to the new one and I'll adjust the, the length, it's longer than it needs to be right now but I've, I'll adjust the length once it's all installed and I can see where I want the pedal adjustment range to be. I got the, uh, it's kind of dark in here, sorry about that, but I, I got the adjustment for the uh, U-joints and the rack. I redid it one more time, just trying to get the, you know, zero slop and not too stiff. Got all that done. And um, I'm about to finish up the, the linkage of the, uh, um, I've got all these adjustable linkage components here. And I'm uh, fiddling with them, trying to get them positioned exactly right. So that's one of the things I've got left. And I've been madly fabricating a tube bending apparatus. This is, this is what I've come up with. <laughs> and I'm just cranking it down now. So well, I've made these molds out of um, epoxy that uh, they're encased in uh, um, cardboard uh, just because they uh, needed to have a mold. Uh, out of something, so I made it out of cardboard, and I've ground the cardboard off of the uh, the, uh, the, the the bottoms, so that I, I don't have to squish cardboard. So anyway, basically welded up uh, some blocks of uh, one by two steel, and then I've got some 12 millimeter rods here, and I've just welded some threaded rod here to uh, uh, some washers. And then that those act as the uh, radius for the bend, and I've got this bottom piece here as sort of a guide. So we'll see. I, it may collapse the tube, and I've tried to build a mandrel out of this uh, woods metal. Um, I was experimenting the stuff you can melt and you know in in hot water, and then pour it into the tubes. But um, I just you know I, it, it's actually it's too tight in the center. But when it's tight in the center, then it's loose elsewhere, and I'm not sure. Like a proper mandrel's actually got these rounded balls that are all chained together, and it, it pulls the um, the mandrel through the tubing as the tubing is bent on the uh, on the tubing bending machine. So I'm not sure my idea of making a mandrel snake and then uh, leaving it in there and then trying to bend it while it's in there is going to work. So if this fails, as I'm cranking it down and it damages it. I'm going to purchase um, some 1 and 7 8 uh, OD uh, exhaust tubing, thin walled 18 gauge exhaust tubing, and I'm going to, uh, that's pre-bent, and I'm going to make the uh, intakes out of, out of uh, steel rather than aluminum. It's like super thin steel so it's not going to weigh anything, but basically I found out that exhaust system companies make pre-bent 1 and 7 eighths which is actually 45 millimeter ID if it's 18 gauge and 47 millimeter OD so it's perfect uh, 
and then I can uh, take these collars off and re-glue them onto the new pieces of metal. So if this doesn't work, that's the that's the direction I'm going later today. Well, ha 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 ha. This stuff just can't take the uh, the pressure. So the epoxy splits, split, split, splits. So it's uh, I either have to build a metal uh, brace to hold the tubes down rather than the epoxy or um, and then maybe something else is going to break. Way more force is required to um, bend those aluminum tubes than uh, I would have expected. Like I'm putting I don't know what's a thousand pounds. It's putting a lot of force on this. This is a pretty uh, pretty high amount of force. Several, several hundred pounds, no question. And uh, it uh, didn't budge. <laughs> oh well. So this is um, one of the shift levers that moves um, between you know reverse, first and second, third and fourth and fifth as it twists um, on the shaft. And I've put a piece of um, 20 gauge stainless steel and I've actually left the uh, the Teflon protection backing on it. Um, and I've just uh, glued, glued that on. I actually used crazy glue. Um, and all it's doing is taking up a little bit of the slack where that rubber ball fits so that um, there's not quite as much um, play um, when you um, when you go for your first to second or from third to fourth or whatever it's it's got a little little bit less uh, play in it now uh, it's pretty much snugged up as much as you can do it so I'm about to put this in this also had a bit of a bend in it front to rear so if I line it up like this it was bent back a little bit but the shift linkage at least in my car likes it if it's straighter so I've kind of more than slightly over straightened it and then I'll put it all in I'll show you what it looks like so four crawler on the web makes a bunch of mark one and two and three shifter linkage parts so I mean I'm using tectonics um, short shifter kit I've got it set on the middle hole because I want um, kind of I want to have the same I'll show you here so I want to have the same um, rough sort of tension going left, left to right as I do going front to back and you know in the middle position it's not that much movement it's only maybe three inches or two net two inches it's like two inches one way and three the other so anyway it's it's just roughly the same amount of tension on against the transmission spring side to side as it is front to rear so it's got sort of a nice balanced feel to it the other thing four crawler makes the um, adjustable links so you know the the non-adjustable links plastic ones like this you just have to really the only choice you have is to play with uh, where the pivot um, positions you can loosen the collar and slide uh, the unit around a little bit um, but I found that I wanted some adjustability right so these four crawler units are steel ends uh, sorry couldn't see for a sec there steel ends with adjustable um, links and jam nuts and then there's a lock that goes and locks it in place so um, I was able to uh, lengthen these both um, both the long one at the back and then this one here um, so for this movement here um, I was able to lengthen that uh, probably a total of about three eighths of an inch or even more and what that allowed me to do is just get a little bit more like so the spring on the transmission holds it in in three four and you go you know over for fifth against the spring or over back to one two i didn't get quite enough play here going into one two so i could get down into into two say um it was it was a, and then of course push down you know for reverse and up but um basically this movement here was was hitting the edge um a little bit too early and not uh I wasn't wasn't able to get enough movement to um, to get it to, to engage one too cleanly. So it's nice to be able to, to to just adjust the links and just take a sixteenth of an inch or even a thirty second of an inch and just move it a little bit and just 
get that feel and so you don't get anything notchy and you don't get any misshifting. I'm sure once the car is broken in, again, you know, I'll get a feel for it, the transmission will break in, the linkage will break in, and I'll be able to just play with it and just get it just right. So, super happy. Once this is all in tonight, then I can get, the, I'll get the shims for the brake and the clutch pedals um, Thursday, and then I'll be able to put all the brake system in and the pedals in and all that stuff. So, I want to get this done first because it's kind of underneath all that stuff.